Hello, folks. Uh, good afternoon. As, as you can see, we have a little different uh, setup today just due to the COVID, a uh, little bit of an outbreak right now. We now have 151 assessment centers providing tens of thousands of tests each and every day across our province. And up to 60 pharmacies will be joining that group this Friday. But my friends, we see the numbers spiking up. It's extremely concerning and we have to act. We always knew that a second wave was coming and we've been preparing for months. Thanks to that work that we've been doing over the last couple months, and the minister gets all the credit, we're working around the clock. Today, I can announce that we're investing over $1 billion in expanded testing and contact tracing. That's a billion dollars to support testing, and this investment will make a huge difference. But until we get Health Canada's approval for new rapid tests, rapid testing that other jurisdictions are currently using, until we get those rapid tests, the health experts are telling us that we need to be more strategic with testing. Earlier today, our top health experts told us we need to prioritize those who are at greatest risk. Starting today, they are asking people to only get a test if you have COVID-19 symptoms, have been exposed to a confirmed case, are a resident or work in a setting that has COVID outbreak, or a resident or work in an at-risk setting such as long-term care homes, shelter, health care. Folks, I want to reassure you, no one who needs a test will be turned away because it's all hands on deck right now. We need to be nimble. We need to listen to our health experts. This month, we've added 500 more staff for contact tracing and case management, and we'll be hiring another 500 staff on top of the 500. We're investing $30 million to enhance our outbreak man management response. We have a robust surveillance and testing strategy for our schools and long-term care homes. My friends, we have the best minds anywhere in Canada working on this. We're sparing absolutely no expense. There's a billion dollars on the table for testing. That's a thousand more staff supporting contact tracing, $30 million to fight outbreaks, and $70 million for the largest flu vaccine campaign in Canadian history. And I'll have more to say next week about our plan to tackle the backlog of surgeries, protect long-term care homes, and fight surges of COVID-19. My friends, we're all in this together. We will spare absolutely no expense. We'll do whatever it takes, and together we will get through this. Thank you, and God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'll pass it over to Minister Elliott. Thank you, Premier, and good afternoon, everyone. As part of our plan to keep Ontarians safe and ensure our health care system is prepared for future waves of COVID-19, our government is investing over a billion dollars to dramatically expand our testing capacity. This means more testing locations and more case and contact management resources to trace and isolate cases. In doing so, we will also be supporting long-term care homes, schools, and hospitals to effectively prevent, track, and contain outbreaks of COVID-19. Our government has established a strong foundation for testing and case and contact management with lab networks capable of processing up to 40,000 daily tests. With this investment, we will significantly expand on that capacity improving access to testing, reducing testing wait times, and ensuring Ontarians get the results quickly. We are also hiring more contact tracers to further expand our efforts to quickly identify potential cases. And we are going to look at how we can better communicate the importance and benefits 
of continuing to follow public health measures. We are working with Ontario Health, local public health units, hospitals and pharmacies to expand testing locations based upon local needs. This will include more testing in new locations, such as your doctor's office, and at home for certain home and community care clients, in addition to the pharmacies that we announced yesterday in Huntsville. In support of these efforts, earlier today we released new testing guidelines to help focus public resources on where they are needed the most. These guidelines will prioritize those who are at the greatest risk while shifting away from untargeted asymptomatic testing. As our government takes steps to reinforce public health measures, we are also investing $30 million to prevent and manage outbreaks in priority sectors. Emergency Management Ontario has developed an outbreak guidance toolkit to support each ministry's outbreak management planning to ensure a strong response across all sectors. And we are also stress testing outbreak response protocols and structures through virtual simulation exercises that have been held across the province to address outbreaks in schools, universities and correctional facilities. Additional scenario planning exercises will focus on Indigenous communities, long-term care homes and retirement homes. Our government is taking the important necessary steps to continue to protect the safety and well-being of all Ontarians. Our Keeping Ontarians Safe plan is an important step forward in our efforts to protect Ontarians from future waves of COVID-19 and to explain to Ontarians how we are going to do it. But again, ultimately the best way to protect one another is the same advice that we've been giving to you all along, to maintain physical distancing, wash your hands frequently, wear a facial covering in situations where you are not able to maintain that physical distancing, and please stay home if you're not feeling well, even if the symptoms seem relatively minor. There's no doubt we are living in unprecedented times, but by following these simple guidelines, we can protect one another and beat COVID-19. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to the phone line for questions. First question, please. Your first question comes from Brian Lilly with the Toronto Sun. Please go ahead. Hi, Brian. Brian, your line may be muted. Uh, Premier, I wanted to ask you about the, the throne speech yesterday and a lot of the promises that Prime Minister True. Much of it was centered around Restriction, things like national pharmacare, national child care. Premier Legault already said he's not interested in that. Uh, are you interested in those programs, and, and how do you feel about the federal government jumping into provincial jurisdiction in this way? Well, I, I, I think, uh, you know, we, we speak from one voice, all, all the premiers. Uh, we don't believe the federal government should be uh, in that uh, provincial jurisdiction. Uh, we need their support. But no one understands healthcare better than each province. We all have different needs, and uh, we're, we were disappointed not to see any increase with the Canadian health transfers that were in desperate need. Um, there is there are some other items we have to get more details on on infrastructure and other areas when we ran through the throne speech. But nothing's more important to this country or every resident in this country than healthcare, and uh, we need their support. And we, we don't need their support with conditions, and they're going to be taking over health care. Uh, if the federal government uh, takes over health care, I think it would be an absolute uh, disaster. Uh, and every premier uh, feels the same way, that they should not be stepping into the jurisdiction of the, the provinces. Follow up. On the issue of, um, uh, of jurisdiction, uh, Premier Pallister said last week that uh, you, you don't renovate your second floor while the foundation is crumbling. Uh, do you feel like without the uh, an increase that of, of health care will be crumbling? Does it put Ontario's system at risk if the feds don't step up with more money? It puts uh, tremendous uh, pressure on every single province, in, including Ontario. We uh, have the largest health care uh, system. We're spending $67 billion a year. 
It's a massive, massive machine, and uh, it, it's concerning when when we've seen over the years, and it's not one government. I, I keep emphasizing this because I don't want people pointing the fingers at at uh, the the federal government. Uh, it's it's the last ten federal governments or five federal governments that have not increased health care spending. So as we've seen an increase of approximately five to six percent compounded every single year on health care, uh, we, we aren't seeing that from the federal government. Uh, as a lot of provinces see anywhere from 20 to 22 percent uh, support from the federal government, the, the burden of 78 to 80 percent of health care spending falls on the backs of the province, and there's no province that can uh, sustain this. Uh, it doesn't matter what, what province it is. So we, we need their support. It's the most important item and issue that uh, the people of Canada are concerned about right now, and we'd like to sit down and have further discussions on the uh, Canadian health transfers with with the Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister. I, I know they're, they're concerned about it as well, but uh, they didn't, didn't mention it in the throne speech, which uh, is, is concerning to say the least. Next question. Your next question comes from Cynthia Mulligan with City News. Please go ahead. Hi, Cynthia. Hello, Premier. I'm wondering why yesterday you announced asymptomatic testing in pharmacies, and yet today then you said, no, no, not everyone who doesn't have symptoms should go there. And, and it's, it's quite a reversal or a different approach from yesterday. Why didn't you do this all at once yesterday when it comes to asymptomatic testing in pharmacies as opposed to, you know, in two pieces? And, and many people are expressing confusion. Well, there, there shouldn't be any confusion. I, I take the lead from our health table, our chief medical officer of health. Uh, we, we spent uh, probably a couple hours on the phone uh, last night, to be exact. I think it was four hours uh, on the phone uh, running through running through this, and I have to listen to the health experts. They're saying we have to make sure there's a priority for health care workers, educators, making sure long-term care uh uh, staff are taken care of and then I, I read your uh, I think it was a tweet about St. Mike's and it's and it's true what you you mentioned Cynthia uh, the more hospitals we're talking to they're saying that uh, close to 70 and sometimes 80 percent of the cases uh, people have no symptoms at all uh, they're anxious and uh, I understand that I, I really do I, I was the guy up here for months over and over again saying get tested get tested uh, now we're as we're ramping up with over 215 sites including the 60 pharmacies as we're going to continue to ramp up and our message to the the people it's going is, is very very uh, simple there's there's different groups there's two groups people that want to test for just for getting a test because they, they feel a little more comfortable and that's fine or people that need a test. We have to focus on the people that need a test because of their jobs or if they've been around someone that uh, tested positive. Um, that Those are the people we want to focus on and it's going to take a big relief off the, the public system. And the pharmacies will be open on, on Friday, uh, all 60 of them, and we'll see the capacity they, they're able to put through there. And then we'll keep ramping up. We're spending over a billion dollars on testing and contact tracing. Uh, we're sparing no expense at all. So that's the advice from the Chief Medical Officer of Health. And, and you know, I, I stand up here every day and get questions from the media. Uh, the questions uh, we, we were drilling down uh, last night, it was, it was nonstop. So, uh, again, I'll always rely on the health experts and science when it comes to the testing. If they're asking me to do this, I'd be pretty foolish uh, not to listen to them. Follow up? Thank you. And today, the Ontario Hospital Association released a letter on behalf of 38 physicians. Uh, they're calling on the Ford government, on your government, to restrict all non-essential business, including dining in restaurants, gyms, etc. Uh, are you considering clamping down on certain businesses, if not across the province, but perhaps regionally? Well, we're taking these measures until uh, we don't have to do that. I, I think uh, the more measures that we put in to keep the economy going and, and keep, uh, you know, so the restaurants. And I, I've always said these restaurants are following the procedures and protocols. They're, I think they're doing a, a great job. 
Um, but in, in saying that, we're, we're going to make sure that we review the numbers and and if it's a huge spike, everything's on the table. I, I will listen to our health experts and uh, that's who I'm going to go with the advice from. And it's not just one person, it's numerous uh, doctors, uh, health experts right across this this province that are giving us the advice, epidemiologists and other experts. So that's who I'm going to listen to. But uh, we, the reason we're doing this, we want to avoid uh, shutting down the economy uh, as long as we possibly can, because I, I think that would be that would be extremely, extremely difficult on a tremendous amount of people. Next question. Your next question comes from Mike Crawley with CBC News. Please go ahead. Hi, Mike. Uh, hi, Premier Ford. Uh, I'm wondering why in the uh, copy of the plan that I obtained, uh, the government seems to go against the idea of moving back to stage two. You said personally that you would not hesitate to impose uh, a lockdown if necessary, uh, but the, the plan seems to indicate that uh, that would be avoided in favor of you know, very narrowly targeted restrictions. Uh, what's the logic there? Yeah, well, for, first of all, I think the, the copy of that plan was earlier on in the stage, and uh, we, as we move forward, this is changing rapidly, and I will hand this to the minister in a moment, uh, but again, I'll, I'll stand here and if I get the advice from the chief medical officer in the health table that we got to go back to stage two, um, then I'm listening to the health experts. Now, we're doing all these measures to make sure we can keep the economy moving, moving forward. We aren't at that point right now, but again, everything's on the on the table. So I'll pass this over to uh, Minister Elliott. Thank you. Well, we will do everything that we need to do to protect the health and safety of every Ontarian. And though we uh, we are taking these steps now, we're increasing our uh, our testing strategy and, and case and contact management so that we can identify and uh, test, trace, and isolate to make sure that uh, people are being cared for and and we can protect the the communities as well. Uh, we don't want to have to move back into stage two because that would have significant economic repercussions and cause additional hardship for people. But as the premier indicated, this is a very fast moving situation. We have seen a dramatic increase in the number of cases and ultimately the safety and health of Ontarians is our top priority and we are going to be listening to our medical experts, our public health experts and uh, if, if it's necessary to take other steps, we won't hesitate in doing that. Follow up? Um, my next question is about testing, uh, in particular processing of all these new tests that are going to be done. Uh, and the, uh, the tests that are going to be done at the pharmacies. Where are you going to process these? Uh, because um, there's some indication that uh, you might have to be sending them across the border to the states. Why would you uh, send uh, Canadians uh, tests uh, for, um, for COVID-19 to the U.S. to be, to be processed in a lab? Well, first of all, uh, Mike, we're, we're utilizing every single uh, testing lab there, there is in, in the province, and I'd uh, much rather uh, send it to other, other provinces. If they have the capacity, we're trying to get lab technicians from the private sector as well um, that uh, may not be uh, involved in COVID, be it pharmaceutical companies. So the lab technicians, uh, so shout out to them. Uh, we'd, we'd love to have you on board and support you, but... It, it really comes down to the capacity of uh, the the lab technicians. We we have enough uh, areas that we can test people. We're going to continue to ramp it up. We're putting a billion dollars into uh, testing and, and tracing. So we're using uh, every every source there there possibly uh, is out there. And it, it, I, I don't care if it's private, public, or whoever it is, as long as we can get these tests uh, moving forward. And we have a really really good team uh, doing this. So right now, that's not the case, and hopefully it won't be the case, but we put all options on the table. Next question. Your next question comes from Nicole Lampa with CTV News Kitchener. Please go ahead. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Premier. Hi. Thanks for taking my question. Thank you. Uh, yesterday, Kitchener's drive through testing site had people lining up as early as 4 in the morning, and by 7, it was at capacity yeah. due to safety issues, a major traffic jam, staff were threatened, the site shut down mid-morning, causing even more frustration. And to add to that, 
None of the 60 pharmacies to start testing for asymptomatic people are in Kitchener, Waterloo Region, and southwestern Ontario. What do you have to say to people in these areas who are frustrated, feel like they are being ignored when it comes to COVID-19 testing? And will you expedite additional funding to these municipalities where there are no pharmacies doing the test? Well, it's a very good question. I addressed that with our team yesterday. We've mapped this out, and uh, we will have uh, uh, pharmacies in in that area to support the people of southwestern Ontario. Uh, and I just want to see how these go. The the sixty that we we have, we had to put them in the as we say the the hot spots. Uh, but uh, we're there to support the people in southwestern Ontario. I spoke to one of the. Uh, local mayors there yesterday and and mentioned that to them that they're there where we will be there uh, to support them we'll be there uh, as quickly as we can and that I guess it goes back to the advice we got off the chief medical officers and more CEOs I've been speaking to at the hospitals they're all telling me the exact same story there's uh, as I said Doug there's people that want the test just for getting a test and I, I understand that and then there's people that need it uh, so what we want to do is reroute the the folks uh, to the pharmacies and take the uh, the load off the the public system, and I think that's the the right decision to do. And again, it came from our our health team, and I'm going to listen to our health team. But the folks from Southwestern Ontario, I'll uh, I'll have an announcement probably in the next couple of days on looking at uh, available pharmacies in in those regions as as well. Follow up. What do you have to say to parents who have kept their uh, children uh, at home because they've got the sniffles or they've got a headache and they're, you know, now confused on whether or not they should go get tested after being told, hey, don't come back to school until, you know, you've either got a negative test or, um, you know, you don't have any further symptoms. Like, can you clarify and, uh, you know, provide some guidance? Will you be, uh, you know, I guess, changing the COVID-19 screening protocols at schools? Well, before I hand it to the, the minister again, um, you know, there's no one uh, that's showing symptoms will be refused a test. And if you're showing symptoms and serious symptoms, please uh, go to a testing assessment center. Uh, if you've been around someone with COVID and you're, you're concerned, then we'd like you to go to a, a pharmacy. And uh, I'll pass it over to the minister. Thank you. Well, as the Premier indicated, anybody with symptoms that is concerned about their health or the health of their child, well, they can they will still be tested, of course. Uh, but we're also, in terms of education, we have hired uh, and uh, over 500 public health nurses that are going to be working in our schools that will be able to help with some of the symptom management and issues to determine whether a child has uh, simply the sniffles or whether it's something that's more complicated, perhaps flu or ultimately COVID-19 to determine whether they should be tested. So these nurses are going to be a very valuable resource in our schools and, and help to uh, determine whether the child needs to stay home or go to be tested uh, or whether they just simply have the sniffles because as we know young children often have runny noses um, that it doesn't indicate that they're more significantly ill than that but I think that the nurses that are coming into the system will be of a great help in determining these issues. Next question. Your next question comes from Randy Rath with CHCH TV. Please go ahead. How are you doing, Randy? Hi, Premier. Um, you keep saying that we need Health Canada approval for a saliva based test, yeah. yet, BC is doing the testing um, presumably without Health Canada approval. Why can't we follow BC's lead and do the same thing and use the saliva based testing before it's uh, approved by Health Canada? So we, we are on the UHN, and I'm going to hand this over to the minister as, as well. The UHN is doing it. Women's College uh, Hospital uh, is doing it. And Mount, I believe it's Mount Sinai is doing those tests, but there are certain tests. We call them, I'm going to generically say rapid testing, and rather than going back and forth nasal, and the rapid testing that we can get results uh, immediately. Health Canada uh, has uh, had, I think there's seven different types of, of tests, that uh, we can get results immediately. It's going to take a huge, huge load off the the public system if we can get this. And, and I'm just asking them, uh, please get uh, moving on this and try to get uh, give us some help. Uh, that's what I'm asking for, really. 
So we, we have the, the BC test, but uh, we need the overall rapid testing. And again, I think there's seven uh, pharmaceutical companies that uh, submitted the rapid testing uh, for, for Health Can Do Approve. And it's just been a long time. And that's, that was my frustration. Until we get this, this, is, this will be a game changer for everyone in Ontario. Uh, it will be a game changer for long-term care and healthcare workers and educators. If we can find out, you get a test immediately. Uh, it's it's just so, so important, Randy, that they uh, get this approval moving, what I understand. Uh, they have a couple people working on this, and hopefully we'll get, we'll get an answer uh, sooner, than, sooner than later because it affects everyone, absolutely everyone. When, when we can't get an answer, which, which is beyond me, if we can't get an answer saying, we're doing the testing, we're going to be finished the testing on this day, we can plan around it. But when you're asking, when are you going to get it finished, and you get no answer, how do they expect us to, to plan properly moving forward? Uh, I, ju I just uh, need, need to have a chat with someone over there and, and get them moving, at least even if they tell us, Randy, it'll be a month down the road. That's all we, that's all we need until we can start planning uh, properly because that was part of our, our plans. We thought this was going to be approved a long time ago, but uh, some things take longer than others. So hopefully they got our message out there and uh, they're going to expedite this. I'll pass it over to the Minister of Health. Well, we are absolutely waiting for the approval by Health Canada of some of the rapid tests. But as far as the saliva tests are concerned, we are running a program at the three hospitals that the Premier mentioned where we're going to be running uh, with, with patients or people who are uh, consenting to this to do both a saliva-based test plus the uh, nasal pharyngeal swab, uh, the, the deep test. To, um, to determine the efficacy of the saliva test. Um, if they turn out to be uh, helpful and reliable with their uh, results, then this is a type of testing that would probably be very useful to use in uh, educational settings, particularly for younger children. It would be much easier to do a saliva test than to be able to, than to have to do the, the deep uh, NP type of testing. So we want to make sure that these results are are reliable. That's why we're running them in trials in the hospitals right now, and we hope to have the results uh, very soon from that. Follow up. Um, last night, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau said that uh, Thanksgiving is done and that hopefully we can save Christmas. Uh, do you agree with him? And, and Premier, do you have plans made for Thanksgiving yet? You know something, Thanksgiving is a great time to get together with your family and your loved ones. Uh, we're just asking people uh, to follow the protocol, keep it uh, 10 people and under. Uh, that Those are the new guidelines. And the quicker we can follow, everyone follow the guidelines. We did it before and we were able to see the cases go down. And we just ask everyone uh, for their cooperation. And it's such a, a special time for anyone to get together with your, your loved ones. And then at Christmas too, uh, Christmas is always a, a big day. And in the Ford household, and and we're we're going to do everything we can to make sure everyone has a great Thanksgiving and a, and a great Christmas because nothing is more important than than family and loved ones uh, getting together. But in saying that, we got to keep it uh, under under ten. This will be last question. Your final question comes from Natasha McDonald with Radio Canada. Please go ahead. Hi, Natasha. Hi, Premier. Um, City officials in Castleman are redirecting people to pharmacies all the way in Ottawa for testing because their assessment center is overwhelmed. Um, are you concerned about people from uh, smaller uh, communities, municipalities, heading to higher risk urban centers for testing? And, and when will testing be expanded to more pharmacies? So I, I think once uh, the, the 60 pharmacies open up and we can get a gauge on how many people they can, they can get through there in a day and plus the, the ramped up systems that we have on the mobile uh, units, the community paramedics, along with uh, the 10 pop-up tents, 155 assessment uh, centers and, and with a message from the chief medical officer and the health team today uh, saying, you know, if, if you aren't showing any symptoms at all, uh, let's let's have a, a list of priorities, and I, I know people want to do this. Uh, people want if they have a loved one in long-term care, they they know that 
the PSWs, they, they should be in uh, front of the line. They know healthcare workers have to be at the front of the line, paramedics have to be at the front of the line, and educators have to be at the, the front of the line. And if you just aren't showing any symptoms and you're nervous, uh, the chief medical officer is, is asking us to get the message that uh, folks um, don't don't uh, basically uh, go to the, the assessment centers. We, we have the, the pharmacies being ramped up. And again, uh, the question about when can we see more? Let's just get a few days underneath our belt, see how it goes on these pharmacies as, as uh, hopefully they are, I'm confident they are going to go well. And then we can ramp up uh, more pharmacies. We're putting one billion dollars into testing and, and contact tracing and that's a tremendous amount of money we're hiring upwards to a thousand people uh, to support us in that uh, area so I, I think uh, if everyone follows the guidelines again from the chief medical officer and and uh, their ask today I, I think we'll we'll be doing uh, we'll be doing well follow up so uh, your goal is 50,000 50, tests but um, yeah. per day, but your government agreed to a capacity target of 78,000 tests a day uh, under the Safe Restart Agreement. So I'm wondering, when are you planning to hit that target, and has the federal government given you a deadline for this goal? No, they haven't given us a deadline. I had a long conversation with the Deputy Prime Minister about that. Um, she knows that we're leading the country. We're hammering out the tests. And uh, again, I just want to point out, uh, every province, every person outside of Ontario with all the resources they have, they still aren't keeping up to Ontario. Uh, we're hammering out the tests, 38% of the population, 52% of the tests, 3.6 million tests, uh, close to 35,000. So the, the structure's in place and we're gonna continue ramping up uh, until we hit our first target of 50 and the Deputy Prime Minister uh, understands that. And uh, I, I'm, I'm sure, and she never said this, but I'm sure she's probably thinking, um, I know her well enough, I wish everyone uh, is doing as well as Ontario when it comes to the testing. I'm going to be on the cough meeting, uh, confederation meeting with all the, the premiers uh, today. We'll have that discussion. We'll also have the discussion uh, about uh, not hearing anything about the CHT uh, when it came to the throne speech yesterday, which is, is very concerning. If we have to uh, continue ramping up the testing, it, it puts a real burden on the healthcare system as a whole, and we need the support of the federal government uh, to step up to the plate. And they've been doing an extremely good job in supporting us with a safe restart, and they're very understandable, and they've been very collaborative. Um, and we just want them to help us out on the uh, Canadian health transfers. It's so important. And again, uh, Health Canada, please get those tests going. It's going to be a game changer for the entire country. Thank you. Th thank you, everyone. Thank you.